What's up? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. Welcome back to the Mr. Business Channel. My name is Q. I'm going to be here going over um, your FICO score explanation one more time. So if you were with me yesterday, you watched my video from yesterday, you already know um, that I kind of went over the basics and kind of the five key areas that are calculated when lenders look at your FICO score. So for today, I'm going to break it down. Um, more in detail I actually made a PowerPoint but you know I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> my new setup here so um, I went and did this oh give me a second here sorry recording recording live okay so I, I ended up making this PowerPoint I went through this whole presentation and then I lost my entire recording so I ended up switching software so now what I'm gonna do like I said I'm just gonna read my PowerPoint here in front of me so maybe you can see it off my glasses but um, here we go. I'll probably share it later, but I just wanted to let you know why I'm not going to be looking at you guys. I'll be looking at my PowerPoint here to make sure I'm reading verbatim from here. So just so you know, instead of me giving my own definitions, I went to the MyFICO website, uh, myfico.com, went to their credit education and just got their um, breakdown of those five different categories to help you follow along and understand. And again, for this channel, I'm giving away, well, not giving away, but, you know, I'm going through the basic foundations of finance, um, credit. And then from that point, as we start to progress and add more videos, we're going to be talking more in depth about more advanced strategies on how to invest in real estate, um, how to repair your credit and all things like that. And recommended credit cards and applications and brokerage accounts. We're going to dive into all of that stuff. Uh, so please be patient with me. We're going to start small. And like I said, so with that being said, I'm going to start this PowerPoint. And if I figure out how to edit it, I'll add it in. But if not, like I said, I'll probably, um, I'll just I'll just see if I can add my PowerPoint to this upload. But anyway, so what is your FICO score? I really wish you could see this. But again, just as a recap, we could talk about the five areas that are included in the FICO score and how it's calculated. Um, the biggest one um, that I mentioned already from yesterday was your payment history, which is 35% of your credit score. And remember, your FICO score goes from 300 to 500. Oh, geez. It goes from 300 to um, 850, so it's about 550 points spread there. Um, next biggest category is your amount owed or otherwise known as your credit utilization, which is 30% of your credit score so um now move right down the list number three uh, 15 percent of your credit score is the length of your credit history of course this is something you can't really shortcut it's going to be just as time goes on your credit history is going to increase in age which is going to be good which is going to show long longevity um stability and it helps give lenders a more um i guess a, a a lengthier approach to looking at your profile versus someone who's only had credit for like three or four months compared to someone who had four or five years. It helps them assess the risks more carefully. Um, and the last two, both are 10% uh, percent each um, to make up the last 20% of your credit score. And one is new credit. So this, is, this also affects your length of your credit history because if you get a new line of credit or a new revolving credit card, or anything along that nature is going to lower your average credit age, um, which can impact your credit, but not too bad as you know, because like I said, it's only 15%. Um, and then on, and then the last but not least is your credit mix, which um, like I said, I'm going to be breaking down each of these um, from the credit education section on the myfico.com. Um, which is also not sponsored of this video, but you can go there and you can sign up and you can actually get um, three copies of your credit report. Like I think every three months for like the smaller plan, like 30 bucks a month. Um, but it's a good thing to have. Good thing you should be tracking your credit score. So that way you can actually check it for errors and things like that. So um, and at the end of this video, I do got a couple of bonuses I want to add in here to kind of help you if you're someone who needs to help with. Um, fixing your credit and I can give you some tips and tricks on what things you can focus on to help give you um, a better credit score. All right, so um, what is payment history? So like I said, excuse me, I'm very tired, so let me try to get through this. All right, 
So uh, payment history shows how you pay your accounts over the length of the credit, over the length of your credit, okay? This evidence of repayment is the primary reason why payment history makes up 35% of your credit score and is a major factor in its calculation. Which shows that your track record of payment tends to be the strongest uh, predictor of the likelihood that you'll pay back all debts as agreed. Um, and as you can imagine, a lender's number one priority is your uh, past record of paying back or not your loans. So make a quick example of this. It'd be, you know, your friend owes three other people a um, hundred bucks and then they come to you. As the fourth person tries to borrow $100 from you, you knowing that they owe that money to the other people that they haven't paid them back, you're most likely not going to loan that money to them because you're going to see them as an adverse risk. So that's an example in a nutshell. Um, moving right along, okay, amounts owed, um, aka credit utilization. So um, in a very general sense, amounts owed refers to how much debt you carry in total. Um, however, the amount of debt you have is not as significant as the credit score, not as significant to your credit score as your credit utilization. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Okay. The amount of debt you have is not as significant to your credit score as your credit utilization. Oh, okay, I got you. Sorry, but I'm confused myself. Whew. Okay, so um, basically what it says, so not so how much credit or how much debt is not as important what okay anyway um when a high when a high percentage of a person's available credit is used this can indicate that a person is overextended um and it's more likely to make late or missed payments so back to that friend analogy they owe three other people let's say a thousand dollars each so they have three thousand dollars they're not late on paying them back but then they come to you and want to borrow money and you already know that hey, this person already owes you know three thousand dollars to between three other people. You don't okay, I'm most likely not going to get my money back, or if I do get it back, it's going to be the, I'm probably going to be the last person paid when you already owe three other people large amounts of money. So, okay, next, and oh man, I wish you all could see this PowerPoint. Uh, so <laughs> I just spun this thing up in like uh, ten or fifteen minutes, but um, anyway, um, so. So again, like I said, these definitions are coming from myfico.com, so it's not coming directly from me. I just went and found the information and wanted to give you their um, interpretation of these different categories, which is slightly different from mine, but it should pretty much be the same thing. So anyway, um, your length of your credit history, like fine wine, whiskey, and cheese, most credit histories only get better with age. Although the length of your credit history only accounts for 15% of your FICO score is still an important influence on lenders. It can definitely impact the chances of whether or not you get a loan. Um, let's see an example I can think of for this um, would be, you know, maybe you, you know, you're 18 years old and you just started establishing credit. So you've only had about three months of credit. So, and that's all the lenders have to go off of. It doesn't matter, like you could be making perfect payments. Um, you're obviously not, probably not gonna have large amounts of available credit because you're just starting out and you're gonna be very new. It's gonna be hard for them to gauge the actual risk and the potential chance of you paying them back. So that inherently can impact your chances on getting approvals or even the amounts you get approved for. Um, but anyway, like I said, that will continue to increase, of course, as you continue to um, get older and older credit lines. This is why a lot of um, uh, advice out there, people are telling you when you have um, some of these older accounts, you don't want to end up deleting them um, because they can significantly drop that credit um, history or, or your credit age. You know, unless you got like 15 year old average credit age, you probably want to keep even your old ones. Just don't use them or use them for very minimal, you know, once you get better cards. Um, the next category is the credit mix. Um, and it says here, okay, the types of credit you have are known as the credit mix. Okay, they can mix, okay, they can include a mix of accounts from credit cards, um, retail accounts, installment loans, um, finance companies, and mortgage loans. And again, we talked about this again in the other video. Um, and that's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, again, Linda's gonna look at you and they wanna see 
um, how much diversity you have and how many different types of loans do you have experience with? Because if you're going, you know, if you only dealt with credit cards and then you want to go for your first installment loan, I, um, I, uh, a car, um, they're probably not going to give you, get you approved for a $50,000 car for your very first loan. They want to see kind of how you kind of manage that, um, again, with mortgage loans as well, too. So, and last but not least is your uh, new credit. So uh, your new credit makes up 10% of your FICO score. Um, when you apply for new credit, inquiry remain, remains on your credit report for two years. Um, FICO scores only consider inquiries from the last 20 or last 12 months. Um, so if you are someone who's currently watching your credit report, which I do recommend you do that at least once a year, um, unless you're actively trying to build it or repair it, then that's something you probably want to be checking on a month to month basis. But um, that in a nutshell, um, new credit, and they're going to look at is how often are you applying for new credit? Because even if you have um, an exemplary credit score, but say for instance you're applying for credit, you know, three, four times a month, you can still get denied even if you have a 750 because they're going to look at you and like, well, you're applying for a lot of credit. Um, whether you're getting it or not, it's going to come off to the lenders as potentially desperate or in need of money. So they're going to look at that and you're going to be considered an elevated risk compared to someone who's only applying, you know, once every six months. They're going to look, okay, this is someone who definitely doesn't need the credit. So they're going to feel lower risk, but they can feel like there's a lower risk. Um, and loaning you that money or line of credit. Um, so like I uh, said yesterday in my video, um, we we're talking about um, working with lenders. I think I was talking about working with lenders. Anyway, I don't remember. But um, so that in a nutshell, that's, that's all I have for my PowerPoint to cover those five topics. And again, like I said, this these first couple of videos I'm putting out is going to help build our foundation and help everyone get kind of a common understanding of credit and finances before we start moving into the more advanced things when you start looking at investing in real estate and um, building credit, repairing credit, you know, and we want to kind of establish kind of the basics for everyone so we can kind of go on this journey together. Um, feel free to, to add comments, you know, if something you want me to go over more or look into or, or show examples of, I'd be more than happy to do so. Um, please leave your questions, comments, concerns, um, criticisms. If you have anything you want to add to the videos, feel free. Um, we're trying to build a community and just help everyone out. Um, like I said, I, in my very first video, I'm just tired of all these people with all these paywalls. And I'm just here trying to give you all the information that I've was able to found, find and continue to find and make sure that you all have that access in as clean, as concise as possible. Um, like I said, I'm not going to sell no courses um, at any given moment. Yeah, the only thing I do now is I do um, some consultations with a few people that I know personally, but I don't actually go out and advertise um, uh, consultations for finance or credit or anything like that. But anyway, um, if you if you think you got some value out of this, please hit the thumbs up, um, like, share, subscribe. Make sure that you leave a comment, um, ask some questions, and like I said, I will see you in the next video.